The appointment of a new Aztec priest is imminent, and in order to satisfy the gods, they're going to enact a tournament to create the best structures possible. These structures are codals, and you are one of these Aztec priests. Go ahead and gather your prophecy cards and engage in a bit of a battle of wits as you build codals. You'll try and make these structures with unique coloration based on the card's requirements, and you'll be constructing three of them over the course of the game. You'll have three different actions you can choose, whether it be to gather pieces, whether it to be to build the codals themselves or gather cards that will increase your point value at the end of the game to impress the gods. At the end of the game, either the bag runs out of points, or, or, or I should say body parts, or after somebody has constructed three fully intact codals, the game will score and players will gather points for each of the codals they've made or ones that they've attempted to make, and whoever has the most points or value or influence of the gods will win the game. It's by Synapse Games, plays two to four players and takes roughly 45 minutes to play. Let's go and take a look down below. I'll show you the game and how it's played, and then my review. Welcome to the game Codal, all set up for two players. Let's go through all the components. First of all, player boards. Secondly, you're going to get two types of cards. You have the prophecy cards and the temple cards. You're also going to go ahead and get these tokens here and give them out to the players of that specific player color. So blue will go to blue and red will go to red. If you're not playing with the rest of the colors uh, or boards, you can go ahead and set them aside. Go ahead and give this first player marker to the first person who last sacrificed to the gods, or maybe the oldest or youngest player. The choice is yours. I'll place it on blue there. Uh, you're also going to go ahead and place this board out with this side facing up with these markers indicated on them so you can see where to place the pieces. Take all of the pieces, which doesn't say in the rules, but take all the pieces of the specific type, like this is tails, and place them all in each of the bags. Tails, heads, and then the body pieces. Now technically for the game's rules and cards, all of these pieces are body pieces. The only difference between these and these are there's an end and a beginning to your codal, and you need to have one of each of these at each side in order for you to go ahead and score that codal. Give every single player one temple card from a shuffled temple deck and then go ahead and shuffle the rest of the deck up and deal them out into two even piles facing them up. Deal out the cards from the prophecy deck after you shuffle them up. For the first player you're going to give three cards and every other player is going to be uh, four, five, and six. Now in this case actually this player would go ahead and get one extra card so it'd be three here and it'd be four over here. Then go ahead and deal out six of these cards out right next to the deck so that players can gather them on their turn if they choose to do so. After that then go ahead and take the pieces from here and place them on this board here indicated in the spaces provided two heads two tails and then two body parts in each of the spaces of the six different spaces indicated here on the board then you're ready to begin the game there are three actions on your turn so when you begin the game you'll take one of the three actions action one is you choose a space on this board and then you gather the piece or pieces if it's going to be these small sections it'll be pieces and you'll place them on your board there if it is the larger ones like the heads or tails you'll take one of them and place it in one of the spaces you have eight spaces provided if you have filled up all of your spaces you cannot fill up any more spaces you cannot gather pieces and you must take a different action the other action that you can do is you can gather cards. You may have a maximum of five cards in your hand, and at the beginning of the game, you'll discard down to three. So you'll choose from the best of the cards that you have in your hand, discarding the rest of them. I simply put them on the bottom of the deck, but if you want, you can put them in a discard pile next to the deck. Uh, and you can, of course, just gather them from either the display pile here or from the top of the deck. If ever cards run out here, at the end of a turn, you'll replace them with more. So in this case here, if this player wanted to take cards, he or she could take these two cards, putting them into his or her hand, and at the end of their turn, they'd flip over two new cards. The final thing that you can do on your turn is build. So if you happen to have pieces in your player board area, you can take those pieces, place them outside of your player board, and begin building a codal, or multiple codals. You can build up to three. You can never have more than two incomplete codals built at any time. Time. And if you have one completed one, you can then complete, uh, you can then go ahead and make another incomplete. So you can only have a maximum of three total and only two unbuilt ones. And so you can just go ahead and build them. Now you have just have to follow the rules of building, meaning that the head goes in the front, the tail will go in the back. And once you build one fully like this, you will have a head and a tail, then your codal has been completed. Another thing that you can do during the build action of the game, regardless of whether you have placed pieces, uh, uh, if you have completed it or not, you can place cards from your hand next to that codal. The only following rule is that you have to have at least completed the first objective. These are the cards in the game. 
and they all have a requirement. They need to have, this one here says a Kotal that you place this on has to have blue pieces. Then you're gonna score. If you have three blue pieces, you can get two points at the end of the game. If you have four on this Kotal, you'll get three points, and so on and so forth. In order to place this card on this Kotal, you have to at least satisfy the first condition, which means you need three blue pieces. So if I have this piece here on this Kotal, during the building turn, or the build, building action of my turn, I can place this down next to this. Uh, you can always play. You can always play additional cards provided you meet the at least first requirement of that card next to a codal. Minimum cards you can have is one. Maximum you can have is four cards. Once you have fully completed building your codal, you'll be able to choose one of these two big cards or the one next to you and add it to your codal as bonus scoring points. And the scoring for those cards works the same as these. When you look at the cards here, they'll have certain rules. Infinite means any number of, and then if it has body parts on the side, that's based on color. So your codal will have to have one yellow piece, whether it's a head, tail, or otherwise. On the left-hand side, any number of black, and then a red piece. If you have that combination, you'll get one times, which is two points. If you do this twice on your codal, you can get six points. Uh, this is simply blue pieces. This is three green in a row. And if you have two three green in a row, you can get seven points. This is a rainbow. And then this one is two separate colors connected to each other. And so that's how you're going to be scoring points on these guys here. You can only place cards down during the building phase of your turn. You can only build during the building phase of your turn. Once you've built, your turn will end and the game will continue. Uh, the last little bit of information that you need to understand is when you refresh this board, because it only happens during a certain time in the game. Basically, you're going to refresh this board when either the outside or inside pieces have all been removed. The moment that happens, you'll refill the entire board. So if this was what the board looked like after my turn, I took this head, I would then go into the bags, I'd place out all four of these pieces and these two pieces to fill this entire board here. If all of these pieces were here, or a couple of them were here, but all of these were out, you would refill this whole board, including the bottom, all of the sides and any heads or tails that have not fully been completed. And that's pretty much the idea of the game. You're going to keep going throughout the game, building codals, gathering these temple cards. When they get taken, you'll simply have a new one on top, uh, placing them down. And the game is going to end in one of two ways. One way is that the uh, body parts have been all removed. If that happens, then the game will trigger an ending. Or if one player has built their third and final codal. When that third codal gets built, equal number of turns, the game will end and you'll score points based on your cards that have been presented for each of the three codals, meaning a maximum of four cards for each one plus one of these guys for each one. Add them up by simply taking this board here, removing all these pieces, you won't need them, flipping it over, choosing a piece based on your color, so blue and red is what's needed for the blue player and the red player, and then using the back of these bonus actions in order to move around the board for scoring points. So if this scored me three points, for instance, I would move this to the three, and then if this one here scored me four points, I'd move this over to the four. If it got all the way around the board to the next one, you would take one of your pieces and put it in the middle, indicating that blue has 50, five points. Whoever has the most points is the winner of the game. And that's it. Uh, last little bit of information. You have three bonus actions that you'll start with in the game. This one here lets you take two pieces from a chosen bag, uh, for, from the chosen small bag, or a head or a tail, and then you'll get to take that for free and put it on your board, and then refill this board here. This one here lets you gather a temple, and put it into your hand, like the one you start with. And this one over here will let you discard your hand, discard the market, put new ones out, gather cards up to five, and then end your turn. These are all in supplement of actions, not bonus. They're bonus actions, they're like improved actions. Once you use them though, your turn is over. You don't get to take any other bonus actions or any other basic actions. Uh, so these kind of like augment the actions you get. Anyway, that's that's all I got. And you guys understand the game, I think. Let's talk about it. Now, before we begin, I wanna also let you guys know that there is a solo game. So there's a separate little rule sheet that explains how the solo mode does work. So if you wanna play one player in the game, you absolutely can. But in typical fashion, the two to four player game is the base variant of how you play. And in the game, yes, like I explained, before. You're gathering pieces, building these codals, these structures, attempting to score cards with your prophecy cards and temple cards, and uh, whoever has the most in the game is the winner. You want to gather as many cards as you possibly can for each of your structures, four maximum, plus one of these large cards that you'll get as you craft them, and uh, scoring the points is important. You can score just one set of the points, or you can go down the list of points and gather as many as humanly possible. Uh, picking the right cards in the right fashion is going to definitely help you out. You don't want to pick some blue card and 
add it to a codal that's green. You also don't want to gather just one green card for a green codal. You'll need to gather maybe a green and a green red card and a green red red blue card. And so you're kind of like trying to craft a narrative, so to speak, of cards that will represent your structure as you complete it. You can place these cards down whenever you want to play and build, and it's going to kind of lead to the process of how you want to examine what you're placing down and what you're choosing to do. Now, you only get to place two codals maximum that are unfinished. You can have up to three, and if one's already finished, you can have two unfinished ones, but if you have none that are finished, the maximum you can have is two. So you have to be aware of that as you are gathering pieces and placing them down. You have a limited supply of where you can place place your pieces onto your board, which means you're not likely going to always finish your codal structure when you're building the first time. And that kind of goes with the idea of slowly building on and adding cards as you progress throughout the game. The game is aggressive in some ways where players are trying to take pieces from you, but not necessarily because it's from you. Usually these pieces are things they need and they'll be able to gather those body parts, so whether they be heads or tails or the simple basic small pieces, always to finish their structures because usually they're going to need to utilize them. So it's not specifically, I'm taking this from you, hate drafting these cards, because when they do that, it necessarily will generally hurt them as you play as they play the game. But if you both happen to need green pieces and they take green pieces from you, that's where the competitive nature comes into play. The board gets refilled and you have to kind of decide, do you want to actually re refill the board for other players by taking the last pieces that you may or may not necessarily need? Or do you want to use a special action that can fill the board itself and let you gather pieces that you need, but then not have that special action for later? A lot of these choices kind of come in. Uh, the cards are the most important thing in the game, how you build build your cards and set them up for your structures is the most important aspect and how you gather those points is what you need to focus on throughout the game. Always with a side eye on the large cards because you're going to want to at least finish one of the two requirements on the cards, if not both, to gather those bonus points for when you finish your structures because otherwise there's almost no point in finishing the structures because that's the only way you gain points for them. Um, and of course, when you choose to take actions and how you choose to take them is very important in utilizing those special ones. When it comes to pieces, high quality plastic pieces. It's a lot of fun to play with this. It's almost kind of like half a toy because you're building these little snake-like figures that move around and it feels really good in your hands to place them and to build them. It's really easy to understand how building works and how placement works in the game, understanding how the cards function and always remembering that the cards, uh, you can't mirror them, you can't flip them, you can't put them in any other order. They have to be done in the cards order. There's a couple of things in the rules that which would be nice a little more, uh, which would be to specify these certain things, like you can't mirror and you have to have them in exa this exact order. Like if it requires a rainbow of colors, does it have to be in that exact rainbow specifically assigned on the card? My take is yes, based on the rules, but it would be nice to have a little bit of clarity in that aspect of the game. But otherwise, it's really easy to understand how to play this game and it plays rather quickly. The setup is really quick and the teardown is even quicker. So you can play multiple games in a row if you would like. The game actually has got a bit more meat on it than I thought it would. There's a lot more strength strategy in this game, and a lot more thought that you need to take into, into consideration as you're gathering pieces, what your pieces you need are, what pieces might be taken from you if you don't gather them before, what cards might be gone if you don't gather them. Does drawing from the deck actually help? Should you actually take a full hand size of five cards when maybe you should wait to see what else pops up at a cost of losing part of an action. Oh, the choices start getting crazy and the competition ramps up as well. We played this game last night on our live stream and Josh was super into it. He bought the game after playing it and that's generally how I know if some if an audience is going to like the game and I personally really enjoyed this one even though I'm not great at it. Callie, of course, won. Uh, she's very good at puzzles. So if you like puzzles, this is for you. High quality components, high quality artwork, beautifully linen cloth bags, nice and thick. Uh, strong. These are going to last a long time. Uh, so they made sure that the uh, everything as far as the insert all the way to the components are high quality and the artwork is beautiful as well. Huge fan of the theme, huge fan of the game overall. This is a solid, solid puzzle game. If you haven't uh, played a game similar to this one where you're building structures, then this is one I would definitely suggest taking a look at. Uh, well, only the little negatives, like I said, is the rules could use a little more depth when it comes to clarifying how cards specifically work. And um, we played the first time we played the game, we played it incorrectly because we took all three of the actions for each player when you're only supposed to choose one of them, but I think uh, maybe it was just us, miss me, or me misinterpreting the rules and understanding that. And then, of course, just uh, how the pieces are going to connect based on the cards that you have. Everything is basically literal when it comes to these cards and how placement works. And then the scoring is nice too. Flipping over the board and understanding how scoring works is really easy, really straightforward, and you can get the process rather quickly as well. Anyway, overall, Kotal, excellent game. Strongly suggest you pick up this puzzle game if you enjoy puzzle games, and I certainly do, but maybe not as much as Cali. So this is going to be more on the Cali side of things. <laughs> if you don't like puzzle games, if you don't like games that involve creating patterns, structures, uh, drafting, so to 
speak pieces. If you don't like games that are more on the medium side of things that usually take under an hour, but are definitely more complex than something that takes 10 or 15 minutes, uh, these are all things you should take into consideration. But like I said, if you like a game like this, the rules and structure and balance of the game work great and feels great because every time you play, you're gonna have a new experience and you're going to get better at the game. Kodal, take a look down below, link in the description. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Kodal. If you guys enjoyed this game, go ahead and like this video. Go ahead and comment in the description below what you guys thought of it. Do you own it? If so, what do you think of the game? If not, are you interested in buying it? You can also go ahead and hit that subscribe button up there. And of course, the bell notification button. It greatly helps us out here and we do greatly appreciate it when you do do that so you can see more videos just like this one. You can also see us play games live on our stream every Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. PST, live on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. It's available on all three platforms, and we do do giveaways there. We do a bunch of other fun stuff as well. Next week, I believe, is Solomon Kane. If you're interested, you can also support us on Patreon. You can join us on Discord, where we do auctions, and uh, you can also go ahead and uh, check out Moonshell, Callie's game. It's now, or pre-orders are now available. We're getting our manufacturing prototype copies shipped in to make sure everything looks good, and then we'll give the okay. Hopefully that everything works out well and we'll move on to manufacturing the actual game and getting out to you guys by hopefully Christmas, maybe a little earlier if we're lucky, but we're, we're going to do our best here. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to constructing statues of the gods uh, with you next time.